Good morning, Roller Skate Revivers. I'm Mickey, and today we are going to take these old soccer cleats and we are going to convert them into roller skates. You ground the skates and I'll ground the tools. Let's go rolling around like a couple of fools. Don't care if we're old, let's start something new. Let's be go rolling around me and you. Why might you want to convert some soccer cleats into roller skates? For one thing, they are very light. For another thing, you can get them very cheaply. They offer a lot more support than, you know, it's really popular right now to convert Vans shoes into roller skates, but Vans actually have really, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry for those of you that love your Vans skates, but they have really shitty soles. It's like hollow rubber. It's just, it's like nothing inside. And also the, they don't offer any support at all. It's basically just some canvas. And these, have, they're not, they don't offer quite as much support as, for example, these are my old uh, Rydell boots that I used to use when I played roller derby. So they have a very stiff counter. I can't even push it in if I tried. This one, I can a little bit, but it's uh, still, it offers a lot more support than a, um, than like Vans or some of the other shoes people like to make into roller skates. These are somewhere, somewhere nicer than like a really low end roller skate boot maybe, but um, not as nice as like a real, you know, good roller skate boot. But, so if you want to start skating and you're having trouble finding roller skate boots, or maybe you just don't like the style of, you know, typical skates, converting soccer shoes, soccer cleats is a viable option. A lot of people like like roller skating needs to be really expensive, but I mean, I got these on eBay for $20. And these ones, okay, fair enough, I did pay, I got these secondhand a long time ago and I paid 200 euros for them, I think, but that was also 15 years ago. So you don't need to be buying like a new, you know, $500, $600 set of skates every year. Like, you know, maybe Instagram makes you think you do. Sometimes I feel like I'm just repeating myself over and over again, because I'm always telling people to buy secondhand. But I mean, for example, I got these, you can see that they, where's the price? Right here, $14.99. And these are, right, can you read it? I don't know. These are Rydell boots. Um, I don't know actually which model they are. They don't have a heel, but they are really, really nice high quality boots that I wore playing roller derby for at least a year, maybe two. The only reason I'm not now is because I'm not playing roller derby anymore. They're, they still have, you know, they're still fine. Um, but if you know what model these are, please let me know, because actually I don't know. So this is actually my first uh, soccer cleat build. I've read about them a lot online, but I've never done it before. So I was reading, you know, things everybody who had already done it was saying. And I couldn't actually find that many drawbacks, except that they're not super durable. Like, I don't know, they, they, they supposedly, they won't last as long as, you know, like, for example, high quality leather, skate boots. I bought these secondhand and I still wore them for I don't know how many years as a roller derby player and the only thing that's wrong with them is I'm missing the tongue. <laughs> it fell off. <laughs> but um, I don't know I, how long these will last and how, you know, I heard that they're not quite as durable as roller skate boots. As far as how, how they compare to like Vans or other shoes that people make into skates, I don't know. If you do know, please leave a comment. So when you are selecting your soccer cleats, something to look for is that they need to have a really firm sole. Um, sometimes Soccer cleats will be have more give around the ball of the foot. Uh, I guess it's better for running, <laughs> but obviously that's not so good for skating. And so sometimes if people get shoes like that, they'll they will make like a carbon fiber outer sole to put under here. I don't know. I didn't see people talking about putting an insole in the soccer cleats, and I don't know if there's a reason for that or if it's just cultural that you know people put an insole in vans but they don't put them in soccer cleats. I don't really know, but I saw people talking about carbon fiber insole on the outer sole if it's not uh, firm enough, but I think that this one will be fine. So, I mean, for this build, all I'm going to need to do is cut off the, what are these called? I don't know what these are called, crawling things, and then mount my old roll line plates to them. And one thing to know is that, as you probably can see, the soccer cleat toe kind of curves upward, and so some people will not cut these off. Um, They'll like leave them a little bit so that there's something to mount it to. But what I'm gonna do, roll line plates often have this this toe wedge. And so I'm going to put that, you know, on top of the plate and then mount so that to try to compensate a little bit for this distance. For cutting these off, I've heard of people doing a couple different things. I saw somebody online saying they just used an X-Acto knife. Someone else said they used a kitchen knife. Um, I might even try with my Dremel and the cutting wheel. And also I, I think that probably the best practice is to use like a belt sander if you have access to that. There's a video that I'll be, I'll link to down here where somebody used a belt sander and that looked like the best way to do it. But of course not everybody has one. All right, method number one, kitchen knife.
Easy. Method number two, box cutter. This sucks. This sucks. Kitchen knife is kitchen knife is better than box cutter. Method number three. Uh, Dremel. Broke the cutting wheel. You know what? Honestly, I think that the cutting knife is just the easiest way to go. All these other ways are annoying. That's way easier. So deciding where to mount these I think is going to be a bit of a novel challenge uh, for me and that's because if you see the soccer cleat turns up quite a bit um, compared to a regular skate boot that is a little bit turned up maybe from my use but overall pretty flat. Um, and so I'm going to need to decide where to mount it. I guess I'm going to have to end up pulling this down a little bit. Roll line comes with these toe wedges that will reduce the amount of pull that I need to do on the shoe, but I will unfortunately need to pull it down a little bit. Um, pulling it down is undesirable because it puts unnecessary strain on this part of the boot, so it will wear it out. But I mean, I don't have like a 3D printer to <laughs> build a higher wedge or anything, so I'm just gonna have to like make do. Um, but it will be a little challenging, I think, for me to decide where the holes are gonna need to be. Um, and in general, when I'm mounting, I want to put the front axle uh, either directly below the ball of my foot, you know, like when you're standing on your tiptoes and you, you notice where your balance is, then that's basically where you end up kind of leaning on. So I want to put the axles either just below that or maybe a tiny bit ahead of that. Um, definitely not behind. And as far as the rear axles, honestly, some people have strong preferences, but for me, it's like I pay a lot of attention to where I'm putting it in the front and then the back. Fine, whatever, who cares? Just as long as it's straight. Some people use a guideline as putting the center of the plate in between their second and their third toe. Um, some people do not. Another thing some people do is they check to see if there's approximately an equal amount of wheels on each side of their skate when they stare at it from above, like the view that you're seeing right now, not the view that I'm seeing. People act like mounting is super hard, and I wouldn't say that it's like you don't need a PhD for it, but there is a lot of, like, there isn't an exact science to it. It's a, I mean, it's an art, I guess. You just kind of do it from trial and error, you know? Like, I, I used to always buy old boots on eBay, so I wouldn't really care if I fucked it up, because if I messed it up, <laughs> because uh, they only cost me, you know, like 30 bucks. So now if I, I mean, I, I've mounted probably like 100 boots and I still get really anxious if it's a really expensive pair. Um, but anyway, it's kind of subjective. Some people prefer like more of a center mount, uh, like ice skaters, where it'd be more inwards, and some people want it more outwards. It's, there is, you know, some people, sometimes people get really didactic about it, and it really depends on the skater. So I'm going to try to do it for myself and hope that I like it. What I ended up doing to decide on the mounting placement, I put masking tape on the boot and I like to do to do that so that if I change my mind, I can just rip off the tape that I don't have marks all over my boot. Um, and so I kind of put my shoes on and stood on my tiptoes and marked the approximate spot where my weight is when I do that, just to be sure. And then I measured the halfway, I measured the halfway points there and then this boot already had a center line. So I just kind of, made a connection from, from one to the other, and I'm going to use that as a rough guide. I'm going to aim for the front axles to be approximately on this line, and for the, the placement to be across, around this 
center line. Sometimes when people do a soccer cleat mount, they end up doing like a, was it, um, another outer sole out of, what is it like? I'm gonna have to look it up and make a little scrolling ticker <laughs> of what the material is, some kind of resin or something. Um, I decided that these ones are firm enough that I'm gonna go without. Let's see how it goes. I'm having a little more trouble than I expected um, keeping my drill in place. It keeps on wandering around, so I'm gonna go grab like a hammer and a nail and just like mash it in <laughs> a little bit so I can know where it's supposed to start. I will be mounting these with T-nuts, and uh, which are nuts that look kind of like like this. Uh, I am fairly new to T-nut mounting. I've only done it a couple of times. Um, but the benefits, some of them I've noticed myself and some of them people have told me. The one that people have told me that I haven't tried yet is supposedly if you are mounting shoes, um, like for, for example maybe a Vans build, if you use uh, T-nuts and also if the plate is very long and aluminum then maybe you don't even need to have an aluminum insole. This is what somebody told me. I am skeptical, not because I don't trust the person that told this to me, it's just that the shoe soles are so soft that I haven't tried it and I'm not sure if I would, um, but that's what people say. Um, the experience, the, what I have noticed that I like about peanut mounting is that with the shoe build, the, the laces, with the shoe build, usually the laces don't go all the way to the toe, so I can't access, you know, my last nut over here. So I end up playing basically tool twister where I use like a twisted uh, screwdriver to hold the screw in place and then and it's just a big pain in the ass, it's not fun at all. Um, but with the T-nut you don't have to do that. And the other thing is if you end up keeping your skates for a long time, T-nuts are actually very quick to disassemble these skates. Um, I, I don't know why, it's just in my experience that it's very easy to, to take them out. And there was, oh it just looks nice. <laughs> I already so I already did these ones um, and you can see I don't know I mean even if you sand down your your screws and even if you or like hammer them so they're not sharp it still doesn't look nearly as nice as like just a clean little button head or even these little fancy ones that I got from uh, Amazon which by the way I do not recommend <laughs> um, I, I have them already so I'm gonna use them but that, these uh, blue blue things that I found on Amazon I was like oh wow these are gonna match you know, match my roll lines perfectly. They're so beautiful and I've already broken several of them because they're not very strong. Uh, I think I'm going to continue and just hope for the best because I'm building these skates for myself. So if they break, it's not too big a deal. Uh, it's just, you know, me. Uh, I wouldn't do it for somebody if I was building it for somebody else though because then they would be like, oh my God, why did you sell me this bullshit crap? So <laughs> I don't really care if I build bullshit crap for myself. So anyway, I am going to, like, I'm going to build this with peanuts and show you what I'm doing. Um, and if you have questions about T-Nuts, I would highly recommend that you check out um, the Quad Skate channel by a guy named Curly, an Australian guy. So he's very knowledgeable, and in my experience, he is also very generous with his knowledge. Um, so if you ask me a question about T-Nuts, I might not know the answer because I've only been doing it a couple of times, whereas he's been doing it for probably like 40 years. Um, so I think if you have questions, please direct them towards him. <laughs> and I will link to, his, to some of his videos in, below. So anyway, here we go. So I have already drilled the holes in this boot. And for a T-nut, you do need to um, drill the hole a little bit larger than you would otherwise, because like, for example, I'm, if I'm using an M5 nut, then still this, this part that's going into the boot is actually gonna be a little bit higher. And as you notice, I did cut off the prongs. Um, a lot of people say that if you are going to use a T-nut, you should cut off the prongs. And in fact, when I was considering doing this for my, um, for my, Bont Park Star build, they told me that if I didn't cut off the prongs, then my boot would crack, <laughs> which is why I was like, okay, never mind, I'll just I'll just do the normal way. I don't even want to risk it. Um, but with these, these cost me twenty bucks, so you know if there's a problem, I don't care. Um, so I already I already drilled in the holes, and so now I need to put the T nuts in. So I just pushed them in with my finger already, um, and it's, I would like it to be in a little bit more, but as I screw in the T-nut, then it is, I mean, as I screw in the plate, I think it will get held in place. I took the trucks and things off of my plate. I am using 14 millimeter M5 T-nuts, very short. The thing with T-nuts is that you won't, you need, I mean, obviously you don't want it to be poking into your sole. So you need to actually either get really short screws or um, be have to cut them and then put them in, because obviously it's going to go in here and you don't want you don't want it to poke up. So 
I'm using 14 millimeter, very short. And I'm also, at Curly's suggestion, I'm going to be using a spring washer. Pro tip, I also use spring washers in my uh, toe stops because, but like obviously much larger, because sunlights are prone to having toe stops that fall out and that helps me quite a bit. So I'm just going to hand tighten this. I've got the my little screw, my butt head screw, and my thing, and I'm going to hand tighten it a little bit to get it going in the right place, and then I will use my drill. I'm just going to hold the T-nut in place with my thumb while I drill this in. I'm just going to screw this in extra tight so that I don't feel it under my skate. So I did notice that I got some cracks basically right where I was screwing in. I'm going to ask the internet if this is because I was uh, screwing these in too tightly or if it's because um, just because these shoes are old. So I'm gonna ask the internet and come back to you. So I asked the internet what I did wrong and why this cracked. Um, and people said that they didn't think it was necessarily the T-nuts or, um, you know, overstressing. I was like, did I, did I, you know, screw them in too tightly? Did I do something wrong with the T-nuts? Is it because I didn't cut off the prongs? But actually the prongs are here in one foot and not in the other. Um, so what people said is that looking from the pictures, probably these boots are just too old and that the, the material, the sole is just dry, so it cracked. So my recommendation to you would just be to tone down the vintage love a little bit and get something that maybe vintage style, but actually newer. Um, but I mean, they're already together, so I'm just gonna take them out and skate and see how they feel. And know, knowing that they might, you know, they might not last forever. <laughs> It's been several months. I am in a new apartment and my furniture is completely disassembled. Um, I wanted to wait a while to make sure that these wouldn't fall apart because you can't edit videos after you put them on YouTube and so I didn't want to be like, oh, this is a great idea. And then two days later they break apart. I made most of this video in the summer and it's now actually autumn. It's been probably like four months, five months. Um, I've taken these out. I don't know, they've ridden a couple kilometers and I'm actually pleasantly surprised they haven't fallen apart. <laughs> um, so. The, I do not like them for park skating to me. I mean, it's probably also, you know, I used a roll line plate, which is an artistic plate, and that's just too responsive for park skating, in my opinion. Um, so, and also it's a little shorter than I like for park skating. Plus, I just don't like as much ankle mobility, but that, I guess that could be a, a matter of preference. But for me, I didn't feel very stable jumping on them. I like them a lot for trail skating, like going outside. I have a friend who leads these moonlight skates through the city every month um, on the full moon, and I've taken these out on those, so they've ridden a couple kilometers. I feel like I have nothing on my feet, but somehow I'm still rolling. They're so light and they're so like fast. And um, so I would highly recommend this for speed skating, potentially derby. I know some derby players have done this. I don't know about, you know, jam skating because I don't do that. So I know nothing about it, um, but I, def I wouldn't recommend it for park skating. Um, but in general, I'm pleasantly surprised that they held up and they are super light and very comfortable. You know, when I take them out to the moonlight rides, I can just, I feel like I can skate in them all night. They're really, really nice and fast and comfortable. Um, so actually, these turned out a little bit better than I expected. Um, yeah, and anyway, I hope I helped you make some affordable skates that you love. And if you do this, then please do tag me on Instagram so I can see it because I really love to see it.
Oh,